Hey, I'm Mike Berkowitz, electronic editor for GEM, and I want to tell you about this cool study we're publishing about the risks of anticoagulation. I trained in an era when aspirin and warfarin and maybe dipyridamol, which we used to call persantine, were the only treatments for conditions like AFib or DVT. Now, of course, there's dabigatran, adoxaban, apixaban, fondaparinix, and hordes of other drugs that are really difficult to pronounce. And because we all have less clinical experience with these, I'm always interested in data that tells me how they compare and what I should be thinking about when I'm prescribing them. So this week's case control study is out of Denmark, and it looks at the association between increase in use of antiplatelet and anticoagulant pills and increase in incidence of subdural hematoma. The study shows that the incidence of subdural hematoma increased in Denmark between the years 2000 and 2015, especially in older men. At the same time that more people were using these drugs, vitamin K antagonists, antiplatelet drugs including aspirin, and direct oral anticoagulants. The authors then show that the odds of subdural hematoma increased with use of the drugs and was especially high with use of more than one agent, especially when one of those drugs was warfarin. So they conclude that the rise in incidence of subdural hematoma appears to be associated with the rise in the use of antithrombotic drugs, especially vitamin K antagonists, in older adults. So what does that mean? Well, we know that antiplatelet drugs and anticoagulants are Goldilocks pills. Too hot and you clot, too cool and you drool, blood. These data are a useful reminder that the just right sweet spot for older people is pretty narrow, and the findings suggest that when you're prescribing antiplatelet and anticoagulant drugs for older folks, you should try to minimize the number of agents and be very aware that warfarin poses the greatest risk of bleed. These data also suggest, although they don't prove, that in older age groups, antiplatelet drugs or newer anticoagulants may be safer than warfarin. Thanks for listening. Hope to see you soon, and don't forget to click the link in the description to read the full article.